It's well documented that bird populations are in serious decline across the country, but a new Victorian study has set alarm bells ringing. The scientific team claims two-thirds of bird, study species, uh, bird species studied, including common birds like lorikeets, thornbills and honey eaters, have declined dramatically in the past five years and they're warning that a wave of extinctions could follow. Lisa Whitehead reports. The population numbers are gradually going down and so we see some species just disappearing. We are in the middle of a mass extinction crisis. How could you imagine a bush without a, without a kookaburra? The Australian bush without the call of the kookaburra, without honey eaters or lorikeets, or the distinctive song of the rufous whistler. It is hard to imagine, but the latest research shows populations of these native woodland birds are crashing, and ecologists say without urgent action, a wave of extinctions is on the horizon. We'll lose our natural, natural heritage. We will we'll come out to these forests and they'll be silent. Professor Andrew Bennett and Dr Jim Radford, along with a team from Melbourne's Monash University, independently tracked bird numbers in central and northern Victoria over a 15-year period. When they cross-matched results, they were stunned. We double-checked and triple-checked and we, and we made sure that these numbers were right. We were very alarmed. For 12 years, Professor Andrew Bennett has been monitoring woodland bird numbers in this protected box ironbark forest. Comparing that first two years and the last two years, when I calculate out that uh, over 40% decline, in this forest alone it, it amounts to more than 150,000 birds less. What surprised the scientific team most was that the problem wasn't confined to rare or endangered birds. It was some of the, the more common species, like kookaburras, like grey shrike thrushes, to have some of these common birds um, declining and disappearing, dropping out of landscapes here, dropping out of the landscape there. That's what's alarming. But the danger signs aren't just being seen in inland Victoria. Bird populations are on a downward path across the country. We have just published some work from around Brisbane which shows 20 or 30 species in serious decline and whether you're a bush bird like this study is talking about or whether you're in freshwater systems or marine systems they're all in decline. So why are our native bird populations plummeting? The primary driver is, is the change in the, the weather patterns we've had, this change in climate over the last 10 years. We've had more than 10 years off below average rainfall now. Um, in 2002 it was well below average. It affects the food supplies, that feeds through to the population cycles. Traditionally these red ironbark trees flower each winter and nectar feeding birds rely on them as a food source. But this winter they didn't flower at all and there's only been two heavy flowering events in the last eight years. These birds will move out of this area entirely. When they return, I, I suspect their breeding success and their breeding attempts is compromised. Less rainfall and higher temperatures are accelerating the damage already done by decades of land degradation. If you knock off 70 to 90 per cent of all the native vegetation, introduce a whole heap of feral predators and weeds, then you can't expect to get away with that away with that without some sort of disaster. Experts say Australia faces losing a bird species every 10 years unless extra funds are found to fund threatened bird projects. We could halve that rate if we doubled the investment. We could halve it again if we added another $3 million. So if we spent, say, $15 million a year instead of $3 million a year, we'd virtually stop bird extinctions in Australia. I recognise that this is a very serious issue, particularly for... Uh, the state of Victoria and that, that wheat belt and, uh, and sheep belt area, but we have significant pressures on our native plant and animal species right around the country. In an effort to protect native plants and animals, the Rudd government has quadrupled investment in the country's national parks and reserves. But the Victorian study showed bird numbers are declining in protected areas as well as in heavily cleared land, challenging the notion that the existing reserve system will preserve biodiversity.
Most of the uh, reserve systems, you know, the national parks, protected areas, were built on pretty crappy land. You know, it's, that's the, the land that we couldn't dig up or chop down. And what we really need to see is a rapid uh, expansion of our protected areas into fertile areas of Australia, particularly along the river uh, frontages and floodplains. If we don't, we will lose iconic species like kookaburras. Governments agree a new approach is needed to halt the decline, but scientists and conservationists argue a huge injection of funds into biodiversity infrastructure must come with it. With our current investment in the environment, we are going to lose many, many species, many species that people treasure and get enjoyment out of and which, which underpins our tourism industry. The federal government's main initiative to combat biodiversity loss is its Caring for Country program to which it's allocated $2.4 billion over five years. We had applications which far exceeded uh, the amount of, of resources under Caring for Our Country which is a substantial commitment already and that says to me two things. Firstly that the need is great in every state and secondly, that we will have to be particularly targeted and try and get the best out of the resources we have. But a recent draft of the federal government's action plan, its national biodiversity strategy, sparked a letter of protest from 90 members of Australia's scientific community. They claimed it contained critical failings. The new biodiversity strategy really sets no timelines and it doesn't set any goals and it doesn't say what it's going to cost. So it's a strategy that doesn't seem to really say you're going to do anything by any time. Look, I welcome the fact that uh, the scientific community are expressing uh, a strong viewpoint about this. As I've said before, I think they got it wrong in part. I don't think they look closely at what the Commonwealth Government's been doing, but I recognise there were some issues that they raised that were legitimate. But that's the whole point of a draft policy, is that you take feedback from stakeholders uh, you listen carefully. If you think there's merit in the views that they're putting, you take it on board and you improve the document. And that's what, we've that's what we're going to do. The stakes are high. Getting it wrong could irrevocably change the face of the Australian landscape.